We've started by giving the program a name, the Charleston Dance Game. What we're going to do is we're going to replicate what would be our dance mat by creating footsteps on our program. This is so that we can program each footstep that when a key is pressed, it will play a sound. When designing the game, we figured out that we needed four sprites each for the footsteps and one sprite for the play button. And also one sprite for the person introducing the game. That's 10 sprites in total that we need to create. We're going to begin by creating new sprites. I've already started some here, but I'm going to show you how this is done. I'm going to go to create new sprite and you can actually draw your sprites. So I'm going to draw my footstep. I'm going to color in my footstep and then when I'm done, I can add it to my program. Okay, so here I've created all of my footsteps and now I have all my sprites ready to be programmed. As we are plugging in our Makey Makey, we know that the Makey Makey is limited to six possible key pressed actions to be used in the program. This is the up, down, left and right arrow, as well as the click and the space bar. We want to make sure that these are allocated to our footsteps first. So we assign keys to each footsteps. We also want one key assigned for stopping our game and we can use the keyboard to start the program. Let's think back to our flowchart demonstrating the sequence of instructions involved in the footstep sprite. When a particular key is pressed, we wanted the footstep, which is the sprite, to change costume into a lighter colour to indicate that it's been pressed and to also make a sound. Let's look at the algorithm for this by clicking on a sprite and examining the script. To develop the program, we click on the sprites and develop our algorithms for that sprite's actions using the drag and drop blocks. As you can see, we have different algorithms for each of the sprites, depending on what we want the action to do. We have here, when the green flag is pressed, we want it in costume one, which is the dark green footprint. When the right arrow key is pressed, we want it to change to costume two, which is the light green footprint to indicate that it's being pressed. To create and check our costumes for our sprites, we can click on the costumes tab up the top here next to the scripts and sounds tabs. So we can see here that we've got two different costumes for this footstep. We've got the dark green and we've got the light green. So we want them to start on the dark color and if the key is pressed, then we want it to flick to the light green costume and then back again. We also want it to make a sound and we've chosen the pop sound. And we then want to change back to the dark green costume one, ready in case we want to press it again. What we've done is we've assigned keys that are sitting in relation to where the footprint is sitting. So at the very top, we've decided we will assign the up arrow key, the very bottom footstep is assigned the down key and left and right for the left and right footprint. We also thought it was important to introduce the program to the user. And to do this, we've created a sprite character, which is this young boy here. And he's going to have some algorithms that tell him to say certain things. And we've also created some algorithm instructions for him to change costumes. So if we click on him, 
we can look at his various costumes and we can make him change into these costumes. So his instructions here are primarily about talking to the user and introducing the game, reminding them where to stand and how to use the program. And because we want to encourage people to create and remix this program to suit their own needs and their own ideas, we've also had him say something at the end of the program uh, once the program has finished.